All righty, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back. Today, we got the legendary Guy Fry with uh, Guild Mortgage now. Guy's looking around like, who's that? But oh, um, <laughs> he's going to mm -hmm. join us this morning and talk about some of the new programs that Guild has has to offer here. And um, with that being the case, I'm going to hand it over to him and we'll get rolling. Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. The yeah, Guild has two new programs they brought out to try to drive some business. Um, I apologize if I'm slurring a little bit. My jaw from my operation is still a little s s stiff this morning. Does this sound all right, Brooks? No, you sound good. good. All right. The first one is a very simple program that Guild pays for 1% the first year on a fixed rate program to explain it simply would be if the rate is at six and a half percent today the first year you would get five and a half percent for free for the first year the second through the 29th the 30th year it would go back up to the six and a half percent it does not cost you anything there's no fees no, nothing. You simply get the rate, a lower rate for the first year at five and a half percent. That's whatever, you know, perfect credit like uh, Tim and I have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's a very simple program. That's the first one. Um, that's a fixed rate, 30 year fixed rate. Does anybody have any questions about that one? So it's five and a half percent for the first year. What happens at the second year? It goes to six and a half percent. Does it stay there from year yes. two to 30? Yes, sir. And is there any prepayment penalty? No. Okay. That's we important. Have... Go ahead. Well, I just... He was saying important. that's important. Yeah. Yes. There's no prepayment penalties on our normal 30 year fixed rate mortgages. You can put five dollars or ten thousand dollars on no but you can refinance without a a penalty with another lender if the rates come down or correct okay we're with guy, I'm, I'm sorry if you already mentioned this but are there any income caps for this program no that one there's no income caps okay it's just a standard 30 year it's not the jumbo programs or anything else uh, the second program, I'm going to do my Maria Bartiroma and put my glasses on for this one, is um, <clears throat> it's called a 321 Home Plus program. <clears throat> it's um, you can put as little as 3% down on this program. And it's based on uh, first time home buyer program only. It's three percent down minimum, and three and uh, first time home buyer program. First time home buyer program means you haven't bought a house in the last three years. Okay, so if you've bought a house four years ago, you're a first time home buyer per person. This one is also has a very unique program that the first year is paid down by the customer for two years. The second year is paid by Guild. And then it goes to the standard 30 year program. So if you were at six and a half percent, you would go down to four and a half percent. The second year you would go to five and a half percent. And the third through the 30th year, you go to six and a half percent. You pay 1% to go down and the guild pays 1% to go down. Did so I explain that correctly? Four, 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 uh, percent the first year? Correct. The second year would be five and a half percent. The third year is six and a half percent. You pay 1% and guild pays 
to buy it down. Did I explain that correctly? Guy, is that you pay 1% up front? Yes. At settlement. You pay 1% and Guild pays 1%. So you'd have four and a half, five and a half, and 28 through 30, or I'm sorry, next 28 years is six and a half percent. In time, the rates come down and you refi and you're not at that. I'm sorry? In the meantime, the rates would hopefully come down and you can refinance out of that and still take advantage of the four and a half and the five and a half. Correct. Correct. No penalties, Guy? Any I'm penalties? Sorry? Say it He's again. No penalties. No penalties. No. There's no prepayment penalty at okay. all. Okay. This also has a thing for uh, if you're a low to moderate income person, it has a Home Depot gift card, depending to keep it simple, depending on how low you are, you get anywhere from a thousand to a $2,500 gift card from Home Depot. There is a chart as far as the median income. Um, the simplest way to put it is if you're between 80 and 100% median income, you get 1,000. If you're 80 to around 80%, you get 2,000. And if you're down at 55% of the median income, you get $2,500. It's all free. It's something we went to Home Depot for and thought we'd have to negotiate with them and they were like boom sure and they gave it to us instantly so if you're part of this program and your income falls within that guideline you get a uh, free gift card from home depot uh, you again have to be a first-time home buyer for this your credit score can be as low as 620 but you have to have it approvable on the computer it's not a manual underwrite and I haven't seen one 620 conventional for a while that got approved on the computer, just to be honest about it. This follows one unit, condos, PUDs, okay? 100% of the down payment of the 3% down can be a gift from a family member. Uh, you are required to get uh, first time home buyer counseling and um, it must be an owner occupied. It must be a purchase. Questions? So that one again, just to recap is for first time home buyers, you got to go to counseling. It's got to be a direct uh, computer approval. Yes. Four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. With beautiful then, credit. Yeah, and then the uh, you pay one percent of whatever the the mortgage uh, amount is, and the guild will pay the other. Yes, and that can all be a gift. And that's that can be three percent down. Yes, three percent down. Okay. Is the seller allowed to pay closing costs? Yeah, the seller can pay three percent of the closing costs. Of the sale price. How long is this counseling? How many hours or days or? I don't know. The last one I heard was three hours. It's okay. brutal. <laughs> okay. It's brutal. Yeah, I just heard uh, PHFA's counseling was uh, three hours and they wouldn't let you like sign off or push the screen, you know, the thing at the bottom of the screen to push it ahead to keep it going, to bypass anything you weren't allowed to bypass it. They're brutal anymore. So <clears throat> everybody always seems to get something out of them, which is good. Yeah, any other questions about that program? 
Is there an income limit? Yes, there is income limits. Um, that's the 100% median. 100% uh, median income is the maximum for that program. Which you have is uh, what did we say it was for I Cumberland just, County? Well, it varies from county to county, right, guy? Yeah. And then comes. Of yeah. And I'm going to print out the ones I have and send it send it out, have it sent out to everybody this afternoon. Um, it's on the PHFA website, though. You can get every county in Pennsylvania on there. But I'll print that out and have it sent out to everybody. Yeah, I'll include that with our recap video. But um, to give you an idea, I think I looked up Cumberland County's average median incomes around 77,000. So that gives you kind of a baseline. I hope hope this isn't a stupid question, but does that extra money up front guy, does that reduce principal? Is that how it works so that it lowers their interest payment? No. Maybe I'm getting too technical. You just pay at the four and a half percent the first year. You make your payment at five and a half percent the second year. And then the third through the 30th year, you pay at six and a half percent. Okay. But you said that the um, lender contributes 1% up front and the buyer contributes 1% up front. Yeah, the, buy down, the buy down fee. Okay. Okay. So that's really just a fee. It doesn't apply to principal or anything. So. Right. Yep. So okay. it's a buy down fee. Gotcha. Okay. It's not a stupid question. That was a good question. Okay, thank you. Just trying to understand how it works. Yeah, Basically, there's buy down fees for any almost any program, and it costs. We pass along the cost that Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac charges us. We charge uh, to the customer for that. Okay. Any other questions about that program? Brooks, we were going to talk about median income or what else were you on? Yeah, the last thing we were going to go over, um, well, two two things. But before we get to that, the other program I wanted you to touch on was the PHFA um, county grant programs where oh, they yeah. can get the, um, the grant assistance, two different types, if I understood it correctly in, in my reading. Yeah, the, the main one is the... Um, where you have 5% uh, of the sale price and you have to only put 5% down. You can't put 10% or 20% on this program. Um, say, for example, you're buying a $200,000 house. Um, they give you, grant you $10,000, 5% of the sale price to help you get in the house. The median income on this program is $180,000. I hope everybody's smiling at that. Uh, the sale price is around $413,000. And um, <clears throat> so you basically have to take a first, uh, first time home buyers program. That's what this is. Uh, the class again through PHFA. Um, if your credit score is at 660 or above, you can take it online. If it's 660 or below, you have to take it, uh, take a class uh, person. Zoom call. And the Zoom one's only about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, the one online is about three hours. So, it's a very simple program. You get 5% grant that uh, disappears after five years. Um, if you sell the house in the first five years, it breaks down to a 20% thing to where you have to pay that back when you sell the house. So if you'd sell it 
in the fourth year, you'd have to pay 20% back. If you sell it in the third year, you have to pay 40% back, that kind of thing. But um, I've done a number of these um, and they've all worked out well. Um, the median income for that, for the $180,000 a year is for the whole state of Pennsylvania. I don't know where they dream this up, but so it's good for us, but I don't know how long this is gonna last. That's a lot of money dishing out every month, you know, on these programs and a lot of people using it. So Brooks, what was the other program you wanted to go over? Yeah, so I think it pairs with that program. From what I read, you know, if you're a hundred percent of the medium income or below, you get that first grant that you you talked about, and that's up to five thousand dollars. And they they match five, 5%. you three to one with um, whatever you contribute to closing costs. And then if you're 80% or below the average median income, there's an additional $5,000 that you can get. So in total, you could get up to $10,000 in closing cost help through this PHFA, um, you know, closing cost assistance program. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with that one. Um... I've been using this one because it's very simple. There's another one that you make payments on um, and it's currently not being used much because of this program, but um, you'd make payments over 10 years and pay it back interest-free. Um, but like I said, right now, this is a very, very popular program uh, the one that's $180,000 income and $400,000 sale price limit. Um, so uh, that's a very simple one. And, uh, you know. The, the $10,000, if you run it out five years, it's, it's, it's totally non-payable back, right? Correct. Okay. Absolutely. And if you buy a, a four hundred thousand dollar house, you know you're going to get twenty thousand dollars towards your down payment. Now you must only put five percent down. That's a very key thing that I found out halfway through a process. I had customers suddenly come up with twenty percent down, and PHFA told us no. This program is strictly for people that are putting five percent down. And they let us, even though they had the 20% in the bank, they let us continue the process and they approved it and went to settlement. Uh, can you put money down after you get the loan? So like you can recast the loan, you know, with a lump sum if they wanted to put that down towards it? Yeah, we're talking to PHFA about that now. We're trying to get somebody to give us an answer on that. Um, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, there's no prepayment penalty with PHFA. So as far as recasting for lower the payment, I don't know the answer to that yet. You're allowed to put extra principal down, which is what these people are planning on doing, but they also want to get a recast. Recast means to adjust your payment for the amount of money you're putting down. So PHFA isn't getting back to us on that. Um, they're still not working in their office and they're working remote. I've emailed them and called them and uh, the person there said they would get back to me and they haven't. So that, that loan just settled a couple of weeks ago and uh, we're still trying to get an answer out of PHFA. And I'm assuming some of these programs are like a first come first serve. So once the, once the funds have been distributed, the, it will eventually it'll be cut off for the year, correct? That's what I'm assuming, yes. But so is it possible to be in the middle of your no. transaction once you get approved for it? Do they hold that money for you? Yes. Okay. Yes, they're very good about that. They've never cut us off the knees, at, you know, halfway through the process or anything. Once that your money is booked, money is booked. But once um once they run out of money, they send us an email and tell us that you know, the money's gone. So you can okay. pre-approve pre for this and then lose the money. 
and then not have it. So you, once you have a contract and I've locked you in, you're safe. Okay. So I'll send out that median. I'll send Brooks and I'll get together and get that out as far as the median income for every county in the state. Um, yeah, Guy, one other thing I wanted you to, to maybe touch on. We talked about your guys' payment protection program, which um, I guess from reading on Guild's site is offered on FHA, VA, USDA, and conventional loans. And what it kind of entails is that these folks doing the programs or signing up with loans with you before um, July 31st of this year, they can at any point in time refinance those loans and have no lender fees if it's done through Guild Mortgage. Correct. So is there anything you can kind of add or elaborate on yeah, with that program? The, this, the basic thing to remember is there's no lender fees meaning uh, we will pay for the appraisal, the credit report, uh, the origination fee, everything. You're still gonna have title insurance and recording fees at the courthouse. Other than that, there won't be any fees. So if, if the rates drop suddenly uh, before the end of July, then that's, that's, that's a win for everybody. So the only thing you'll have to pay is a reissue of title insurance and recording fees at the courthouse. Appraisal fee is gonna be paid for by us. Uh, the credit report and the origination fee, which awesome. is $1,200. <laughs> so, um, you know, talking about rates dropping, there was a thing I listened to this morning um, on, you know, forecasts for the upcoming year or two years and uh, everybody's speculating on a refinance boom when rates come back down and i guess what uh, lenders are currently doing especially the government insured loans that they uh, sell on the secondary market they're trying to hedge against that and protect their investment because if those loans get paid off that are underwritten right now, if they get paid off before three years, potentially the investors or the banks can lose money on that because they're not collecting the servicing fee. So right. from what this video I was watching this morning was explaining that they're likely gonna institute some loan level price adjustments here coming up, I think by May on conventional loans specifically, um to kind of protect on that refinance boom if it was to occur in the next two years can you add anything to that that's kind of like an upfront fee that you know gives the lender or these investors more money to protect against that loan being paid off right the banks and mortgage companies make money from selling the mortgages on the secondary market and what will happen is uh the especially they make their biggest amount of money the first three years. Um, if we have to, if we lose the loan after that, we lose a lot of income. And so what uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are doing is uh, charging, they're, expect, they're expecting a boom because of the uh, election coming up in 24. Uh, they're expecting the rates to drop and uh, especially towards the end of the year. So um, what they're doing is they're putting um, prices in there to protect the um, banks and the mortgage companies that have sold their mortgages on the secondary market. And there's, there's gonna be fees or higher interest rates depending on the uh, refinance, for example, say your house is worth $100,000 and you owe 90,000 on it, there's going to be a higher fee for that versus somebody that has a, um, owes 80,000 or 70,000 on that $100,000 loan. The higher the, the LTV, uh, the higher the fee is to refinance the house. So um, 
unfortunately, if uh, values drop on the house on top of your balance being the same, uh, you're going to get hit with a higher fee, higher interest rate, or charge it in points. It's going to depend up to the mortgage lender how they're going to do that. So uh, that's coming, uh, unfortunately. So when you go to refinance, um, you know, hopefully your value of your house stays up there or increases versus drops, you know, in the next year or two when they're, they're expecting this uh, refi boom for the election. Yeah, you know. and, and um, from what I, I heard and what I understand is it's not just refis as well, it's it's purchases. So debt to income ratios involved in that as well. So there's a higher fee for the higher debt to income ratios on new purchases. So I just thought that was kind of relevant information to bring up that way when you're talking to your your clients and consumers, you can pass that along. Obviously, if they buy before May, um, they're not going to be subjected to those new fees that are instituted on those loans. We, we um, approve people based on their debt to income and Normally, they'll they'll go up to forty five to fifty percent, believe it or not, of their gross income with the house and with all their debts. And what they're talking about is uh, penalizing people when you go past forty five percent up to fifty percent, um, and giving them a little higher interest rate because of that. So. It hasn't come out yet, so we'll see when it comes out. I'll I'll come back and talk to people about that, but um, it's a risk thing. It's also a money making thing for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac too. So awesome. Well, does uh, anybody have any other questions for Guy at this point? If we're all good, we'll get this uh, wrapped up. I do want to mention that we have our our third dial for dollars tonight from five to six. Um, we're having it both here in the Chambersburg location. Um, I think down in Chambersburg, they're doing it a little later, though. I don't know if uh, Kara's on this, but I think she mentioned maybe six to eight down there. So um, we would love to have a good turnout here tonight at, at our location. If you do plan on attending, please RSVP to me. Guy and Guild Mortgage have been kind enough to provide pizza for us. So we just kind of need a head count for that. Um, Aaron, anything you want to add? I was trying to unmute myself. Nope, yeah. I just wanted to remind everybody, I'll keep sending it out too for the chili cook-off. Um, we have a couple of people signed up. I wanna see you know, how many more people. And remember that even if you don't cook chili, we still want you here to taste it and to judge and um, maybe throw in a vote for Regina this year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's on the, the seventh, oh. right? She, yep. she said she wasn't going to enter. Are you entering, Regina? I'm entering. Okay. I a girl, Regina. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, Uncle but Pam pop. Yeah, yeah that's go it. ahead, Aaron. What's that, Brooks? I just wanted to see if you guys had any finding, final uh, <clears throat> comments or closing remarks. Yeah, I would. I'd like to say a couple of things here. Number one, uh, thank you, Guy, for giving us that information. Uh, you know, there, the, the discounting of mortgages is a very complex situation, and we just glossed the surface of it because it takes so much cash to either buy down an interest rate or you know, the banks have got to make money too. And that's why they're protecting themselves with these advanced fees that, that they're charging. You know, there's no free lunch in anything that we do. And speaking of that, one of the things that I really wanted to touch on today is I don't care if you're on social media. I don't care if you're networking. I don't care what you're doing to see the people. But in all respects, 
This business is changing. It's no longer order taking. We're now having to use our skills and we now have to contact and see a bunch of people more than ever before. And just remember everything that you do, it's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight in the dog that really makes the difference in our lives. So please never give up. Always be out there with one more touch. And if you do that one more touch, you're going to win the game every time. We're not going to fail in this business. We're going to succeed better than ever before because it's a regular market. Right, Tim? Guy, good job today. Oh my very, God. Thank you, Tim. Very good job. <laughs> yep. Dad, great words. Um, the only thing uh, I'd like to add to it is, did you re read my email today? I did. Did you listen to the song? I did. Aaron doesn't like the fact that these are a lot of 80s songs. So this week you're going to catch a country one. So read my emails, listen to the songs, get pumped up, write the notes, make the calls. And today's call was, I want to be rich. And I hope you do too. And so, make a video. Someone else needs to dance and post. That's right. We need somebody else to do it. Otherwise, Stacy's going to have to do it again. Right. Stacey, nice oh, job, Stacey. <laughs> oh, that was good. I, I got some good ones coming. So um, I like today's, I want to be rich. So, all right, guys, have a great day. Guy, one again, day. I just job. want to add one thing. Though. Thank I you. Be rich. If Thank you, you really, everybody. If, if you really want to be rich, you've got to walk the walk and talk the talk. And basically, that means you're going to have to give some serious extra effort. I don't know of a wealthy man that hasn't dedicated his life to becoming a millionaire. And the only way that happens is to work your butt off. End of story. Yep. Have a great day. All right. We'll see you.